Hello, welcome to this video lecture on a short introduction to the classics in Russian literature. This is a topic included in the co-paper World Classics prescribed for the 6th semester BA English students of the University of Kerala. Now, the, in this lecture I will be giving you a brief overview of uh, what a classic is, then uh, a few writers who have produce the greatest classics in Russian literature. We will be just going through the names of the authors and their most important works. So I would suggest that you prepare detailed notes in order to prepare for the university examinations. I will also give you a few questions that are usually asked at the end of the lecture. First, let us try to understand what the term classic means. I am sure all of you are looking at the painting of Mona Lisa on the slide. So, uh, a classic simply defined as an outstanding work of art. It can be a painting, a novel, a sculpture, uh, uh, a piece of art, I mean, a building like the Taj Mahal, for instance. So a classic has got universal appeal and it will essentially be of the highest quality. The most important feature that determines what a classic is, is that it stands the test of time. Now, what is the role of museums in creating classics? A museum is a place where you know, all those great works of art are preserved and displayed. Now, uh, uh, Da Vinci's painting, The Mona Lisa, is a work of the early 16th century. It has been on permanent display at the Louvre Museum in Paris since 1797. So it was only because it was displayed in a museum that people were able to see and appreciate the Mona Lisa. It is still considered a classic masterpiece of the Italian Renaissance. The Mona Lisa is the best known, the most visited, the most written about, the most sung about, and the most parodied work of art in the world. So we come to the question, what is a literary classic? We have already seen that the classic is an outstanding work of art. So a literary classic would obviously be an outstanding poem, an excellent novel or a short story, or a play of the highest quality, and of course, that which has stood the test of time. Two monumental classics of ancient Greece are Homer's The Iliad and The Odyssey. The ancient Greek tragedies by Sophocles, like Oedipus Rex and Antigone, are also literary classics. The Sanskrit poet and dramatist Kalidasa is considered as one of the greatest Indian classical authors. His Abhijnana Shagundala is regarded as the greatest work in Indian classical literature. Uh, can you find out more examples of literary classics? Pseudo-classics and neoclassics. What is a pseudo-classic? The word pseudo itself means fake or false. A pseudo-classic is a work that imitates or a work that pretends to be a classic. Some critics consider the works of French writer Voltaire as pseudo-classics. So pseudo-classics lack the qualities of a classic. Now, neoclassics, I'm sure you're familiar with neoclassics, being students of literature. Uh, you must have learned about the neoclassical age in English literature. So neo means new. So neoclassics just means revival of the classics. It is an attempt to bring back the ancient glorious literary tradition. Neoclassicism coincided with the 18th century age of enlightenment. Rewritings of classics. 
Many modern writers who have been inspired by the classics have attempted to rewrite or to retell the classics in different ways. An example that I have given here is the Penelope by Margaret Atwood. Uh, it is based on Homer's The Odyssey. Penelope is Odysseus's wife and Margaret Atwood has written a fictional narrative uh, through the eyes of or the narrative is narrated by Penelope. We come to the term modern classics. Now, earlier classics generally used uh, refer to works of the past, but now classics also include great works of literature, uh, irrespective of the age in which they were produced. Now, modern classics obviously refer to classics produced in the modern age. Some of these are Kassansakis Zorba the Greek. This novel has also been prescribed for you. Then Ernest Hemingway's The Old Man and the Sea, Gabriel Garcia Marquez's 100 Years of Solitude, and Salman Rushdie's Midnight's Children are all examples of modern classics. Uh, it is said that Christianity has had a great influence in modern classics. Uh, earlier versions of the classics, classical literature, has been looked down by the church because of uh, the influence of paganism, or it was considered as pagan literature. So many modern writers have attempted to uh, have attempted to produce um, their own perspectives on Christianity in their works. Let me give you a few examples. The first example that I have used is Kasansakis, The Last Temptation of Christ. It was published in 1955 and it was banned by the Greek Orthodox Church. Kassansakis in his novel depicts a Christ who is more humane in nature rather than uh, giving him an entirely godly persona. Kassansakis gives him a more, makes him more of a man. So he is far more human than the one seen in the Bible. His Christ is gloriously divine but at the same time earthy and human. And he behaves just like any other man, any ordinary individual, subject to fear, doubt, and pain. Now, another writer, the Russian writer, Dostoevsky, has also depicted, uh, has also used, uh, has also been influenced by uh, Christianity, as seen in his works. His most important novel, Crime and Punishment, the heroine of Crime and Punishment, Sonia, is portrayed as an unrealistic symbol of pure Christian goodness. So for Dostoevsky, he believed that Christ-like goodness is possible in real life. So his novels are often classified by critics as novelistic proofs of Christianity. Uh, so we come to the topic in question, the classics in Russian literature. The origins of Russian literature can be traced to the Middle Ages when epics and chronicles were composed. From the early 1830s onwards, the Golden Age in Russian literature began. Poetry, prose and fiction flourished well during this Golden Age. Now let's take a look at the authors who produced classics in Russian literature. Please try to remember the names of the authors and at least one famous work written by the author. The first author is Alexander Pushkin, 1799 to 1837. Pushkin was a Russian poet, a playwright, and a novelist of the Romantic era in Russian literature. He is considered to be the greatest Russian poet. Critics also call him the pioneer or the founder of modern Russian literature. Prominent works include The Belkin Tales, published in 1831, The Queen of Spades in 1834, The Captain's Daughter in 1836. The next author is Nikolai Gogol, 1809 to 1852. Gogol was a Russian dramatist, a novelist, and a short story writer. 
he is considered as the first Russian novelist, the first great Russian novelist. He laid the foundations of Russian literary realism. Some of his popular works are The Nose in 1836, Dead Souls 1842, and The Overcoat 1842. The next author is Fyodor Dostoevsky. Dostoevsky had an immense influence on 20th century fiction. He is internationally renowned for his mastery in short stories and novels. Dostoevsky was born in an orthodox Christian family and his faith got deeper and stronger all his life. His four important novels are Crime and Punishment, 1866, The Idiot, 1869, The Demons, also called The Persist in 1872, and The Brothers Karamazov, 1880. These works are dark, violent, and tragic. But his works emphasize the value of suffering, faith in God, and about how a good person can also do something very bad, but deserves compassion and forgiveness. The next important writer is Anton Chekhov, 1860-1904. Chekhov was a representative of the late 19th century Russian realist school. Chekhov excelled in writing short stories and plays that revealed a deep understanding, a profound understanding of human nature and the ways in which ordinary events can carry deeper meaning. His famous works are Uncle Vanya in 1898, considered a masterpiece, The Cherry Orchard in 1903, and his short stories are very famous. The next author is Maxim Gorky. 1868 to 1936. In the 1930s, socialist realism became the predominant trend in Russian literature. Its leading figure was Maxim Gorky, who laid the foundations for this style. His most famous work is Mother, published in 1906. Gorky's autobiographical trilogy is also one of the finest in Russian literature. My Childhood, In the World, My Universities composed during the decade from 1913 to 1923. The title of the last uh, book in the trilogy, My Universities, is quite sarcastic because Gorky's only university was his life. Do you know that Maxim Gorky was the pseudonym that he used? This is his pen name. Can you find out the real name of Gorky? The next writer is Boris Pasternak, 1890-1960. The beginnings of the 20th century, the beginning of the 20th century marks the silver age in Russian literature. Boris Pasternak is most often associated with the silver age. Now his most important work is Dr. Shivago. It won the Nobel Prize in 1958. The last writer that I have included in this lecture is Alexander Solzhenitsyn, 1918 to 2008. So this Nobel Prize winning novelist was a writer who dared to oppose Soviet ideology. His important work is Cancer Ward, published in 1968. Now, I haven't included a very important, uh, one of the most important Russian writers in this lecture deliberately because I will be talking more about him in the next video lecture and it is Leo Tolstoy. These are a few questions that can be asked from what we have discussed. Uh, define a classic, uh, name the author of Crime and Punishment, what is a pseudo classic, who wrote the cherry orchard, which modern classic is set in Piraeus? If you don't know the answer, the answer is Zorba the Greek. Now, for which work was Pasternak award, awarded the Nobel Prize? It is Dr. Shivago. Name two Russian classics. Who is considered the pioneer of modern Russian literature? Who laid the foundations of 19th century Russian realism? These are all very short answers. Now, a few paragraph answers 
uh, that have come in university exam that have been asked in university examinations are the role of museums in the creation of classics. Literary contributions of Anton Chekhov. I've just given you a brief overview of the authors, so please make detailed notes. Then the influence of Christianity in modern classics has also been asked. Classical Indian dramatists. I haven't discussed that in this lecture, but this is a question that is usually asked from the introductory module of this paper. Then features of Greek drama. And uh, uh, essays may also be asked from this section. So oh, this is an essay that was asked once, write an essay on the prominent themes that Greek and Roman classics demonstrate. Again, this I haven't dealt with this topic in this video. Now, uh, these are some of the references that I made use so, of. Um, I hope this video lecture was useful to you, to a certain extent at least. And as I mentioned earlier, please prepare detailed notes on the topics discussed so, so that you will be able to write well in the examinations. Thank you so much for your patient listening. I hope you will also listen to the second part of this video lecture on Russian classics that will focus on Leo Tolstoy and his famous novella, The Death of Ivan Ilyich. Thank you once again.